what's going on welcome back to the channel if you're not subscribed please hit that subscribe button and we're back with star girl episode 4 season 2 and moving on to this one guys last week's episode johnny thunder we see that jakeem is the new wielder of thunderbolt so we leave that now and we move on with Courtney and her plan to take out the remaining members of the Justice Society. That didn't actually work the way that she had hoped. The goggles briefly came to life and warned them about Eclipso, someone the young JSA had never heard of before. Now, some pieces of the puzzle had start to come together in this episode for Pat. Obviously, Pat knows about Eclipso. He had run-ins with them and the information database that he served up as being a sidekick of the JSA. And we know that they continue to try to figure out what Shade actually wants in Blue Valley. But they have something of a little more pressing issue to deal with. Crusher Croc Sportsmaster and Paula Brooks Tigress are back at Blue Valley. And that just makes things a little more uncomfortable and complicated. As Artemis visits her parents in prison, she tells them she can't stay at the foster homes anymore and she misses them and obviously the prison guard cuts Artemis, visits short and then taunts her about her parents being locked up. But we see Beth trying to get the goggles working again so she can get more information on Eclipso but to no avail. Beth talks to her mum briefly about the, well, not the divorce. She hasn't actually confronted her about the divorce, but she can see here Beth is trying to encourage her mum to go out on a date with the dad and she talks about the things that they used to do. And it's funny because they didn't really discuss that last week. We're seeing these gaps in the series where certain things are happening and it takes them a while to sort of come back to them. It's not like your normally regular serial show where they revisit most of these tones every week. A lot of things like Starman, as we know, Sylvester Pemberton, again, we don't see him again this week, so it's weeks now we haven't seen him, but certain things are kind of being left to the back burner. But what we did say with Beth is that the goggles finally brings up a file on Eclipso, but the file is marked confidential. So for some reason, they are hiding something. Now, these secrets and lies are played out as we see Pat and Barbara, they get freaked out about Eclipso and her and Pat sort of decide to tell the kids about the villain when Courtney comes in and tells them that the goggles warned them about Eclipso. The files are confidential as we know, but Pat sort of reluctantly tells her that Eclipso is the real evil imprisoned in the Black Diamond and that the Shade is looking for him. Pat also explains that Eclipso can get into people's heads and he kind of told Courtney that they make people do things that they don't want to do. And the longer that Eclipso is active, the more powerful he becomes. Now, we go back to the ISA layer now where Cindy tells Eclipso that she's still upset about her stepmother's death, but Eclipso says, you know, it's not really anything about her stepmother, it's more than just creating the new team. Cindy sees her deceased mother and hears her plea with her not to hurt her, but, you know, Eclipso is temporarily messing around with her head, and he also alters the appearance of the JSA portrait. So you can see he's poisoning Cindy's mind and Cindy's not actually strong enough to deal with that. She has not looked at this and thought, you know, I'm being manipulated here and it may take for one of the members of the ISA to do that. But Rick takes another exam and gets a perfect score. So I really like the fact that the teacher apologized and doubt for doubting him. And he says, you know, it's okay because that's what everybody does. And I really felt bad for him, but maybe this can gain some confidence from that relationship because we know he's a loner. We know he just gets on with what he wants to do. We know he's also studying because in the comics, his father was able to manipulate the chemistry of the actual hour man glass where he could get more than an hour out of it. But the, the shift was, is that it would be less than an hour. It would make him more powerful. So I really hope that they pay something like that off in the coming seasons where he can because having him walk around being just this angry person and hitting everything was something I was hoping they wouldn't do and we've seen a kinder more gentle Rick in season two he keeps calling <laughs> Grundy his dog you know asking for a dozen hamburgers and fries and everyone's looking at him like what is going on that's some kind of dog that you're feeding there and I'm surprised that Beth hasn't figured it out already or none of them have they're just sort of leaving him let him go on to visit this dog and feed the thing like it's no tomorrow. I mean, 
I find it hilarious, but I, I think it's showing a kind of gentle side to Rick, which we've really needed to see with, you know, this angry boy, this person who has really been so tortured by his past and filled with anger, is now showing a different pleasant side to him and showing more upside. And I think that can only be good for the hero moving forward. Now, the thing about Pat here is Pat obviously goes to meet Crusher and Paula, Sportsmaster and Tigress, and they explain that they aren't there for revenge. They're in town to support Artemis and her football tryouts. And Crusher tells Pat and his wife that, you know, they never really fit into the ISA. But when Pat mentions the shade, he has nothing nice to say about him. Paula even sort of shames Barbara for her food options in the kitchen as well. I thought that that is hilarious. That whole scene where they had Crusher and Pat and Paula and Barbara, I thought that that was just hilarious. I, I really enjoyed that, <laughs> laughing my head off as they were talking about their daughters being stubborn and finding common ground in parentship. And I like that Sportsmaster and Tigress actually are good parents, regardless what you want to say, guys. Regardless what you want to say, Sportsmaster in the show is kind of compared to the Young Justice in that he's pretty much father of the year. And I really did like that in this series. And it shows that Brainwave was a really bad parent, you know. He loved kind of Henry, but it was just that he thought that ISA's missions was more important than his kid's life. That's not the same with Paula and Crusher. It really isn't. They put Artemis first. And it's just really nice to see that they're exploring that in this episode. And it might come to a point where we'll see that pay off too. Where we might see that change their ethics while they're in jail or will they come out and assist with what's going on with Eclipso. So Courtney visits a place called the House of Secrets. Now it's important guys that the House of Secrets is actually something which was Eclipso's first comic. It was where he was first shown in the comics, in DC Comics, where Eclipso appears. So it's really fitting that this place was called the House of Secrets when that is actually a big easter egg for the name of the comic. And she asks for books on Bruce Gordon. And she encounters the shade, but before I talk about that, is Bruce Gordon, guys, remember, is the, was the original wearer. He was the one that we saw kill Rebecca McNider when she was 10 years old. That's the same Bruce Gordon that she was talking about. So she encounters the shade and accuses him of wanting to team up with Eclipso. But the shade tells Courtney that there's a big difference between bad and evil. And while he might be bad, Eclipso is evil. And the Shade explained that Eclipso is the one that killed Dr. Midnight's 10-year-old daughter, Rebecca. So he claims that he's doing it because he's bored and there's actually clearly nothing more to it. And this means that he tells Courtney to leave him alone and let him go about trying to save them. Now, it seems that my theory last week was correct. I did talk about this in my review last week and I said that First of all, Dr. Midnight didn't die. I did say that because all you saw him being dragged away in a puff of smoke. And secondly, that the Shade is someone who's going to help and assist the kids by taking care of Eclipso himself. And it seems that I was 100% bang on the money. But uh, we also go back to Cindy. Now, Cindy takes Isaac to the ISI headquarters and tells him about his father, the Fiddler. And Cindy tells him that he'll have to learn how to play his father's violin if he hopes to follow in his footsteps. Now, Cindy is sulking around, and although she uses Eclipso to target Artemis, Artemis hallucinates that the snipers are about to take out her parents. So she, she attacks what looks like is the SWAT soldiers, but it's actually attacking Courtney. So Paul and Crusher tell their daughter the truth about what they've done. And they put in her first and tell her that they won't let their bad habit deeds get in the way of her development. And Artemis later finds out she actually doesn't make the football team. And that's where we see Cindy step in to try and recruit her to the ISA. So as I said, is it going to be a point where Sportsmaster and Tigress actually come out of jail to save Artemis from Eclipso? I think that might be something to it. They're not showing us that they're good parents for no other reason. It must be for that reason. So Courtney now confronts Pat about Dr. Midnight's daughter and he tells her that he did know. And Pat and Barbara decide to continue not to tell the JSA the full truth about Eclipso and the JSA. Now, this is shrouded in mystery and 
I really don't know what this can be. It could be anything, guys. I mean, I wouldn't even begin to theorize it at this point because I really don't know what we're dealing with. And, and it could be something quite shocking and a, and a big revelation to the overall plot. I don't know whether it's something that they started or some, or whether Bruce Gordon was a, a, an original member of the JSA. I, I don't know. I don't know what it could be. But there's something that they're really holding back and I can't wait for them to tell us what it is. But Beth continues working on trying to open up this file uh, to bring the goggles to life. And once again, the voice on the other end doesn't know her. It doesn't understand who she is. However, it's revealed to us in a big shock that Beth isn't talking to the AI anymore. She's actually talking to the real Dr. Midnight. He's alive and he's trapped in the Shadowlands. Now, did the ISI even kill any Justice Society members at this point you know they keep popping up it's really strange i mean we know that rex and his wife was killed by grundy we know that alan scott never returned for his children and left the ring for jenny we know jenny funder gave a final wish to thunderbolt but again we haven't seen a body sandman we saw his body wesley dobbs in a particular scene being killed by icicle at the start of the series so it's smart to think that wildcat is in there too but unless they're doing the nine lives thing the Wildcat is probably dead since we haven't actually seen him. We know that Hawkman is probably dead and since they reincarnate, they could be something that we see later on down the road. Jay Garrick as well, The Flash, is probably dead. But remember, the version that's coming on to Season 2 isn't the same as Stargirl's Earth 2. It's a different version. So I find characters like Shade and Sportsmaster and Tigress at the moment are by far more interesting villains. And they're fun villains as well. And we get to watch the Eclipso storyline unfold. But Eclipso is a villain at the moment. I think Sportsmaster, Tigress and Shade are kind of more enjoyable at this point. And Pat is eventually going to visit the prison to tell the Crocs to break out if they want to save their daughter, as I said previously. But the writers better not screw up their dynamic. The fact that they're a loving, dedicated family at this point and they're supervillains is the best aspect of the show. It's kind of like a very twisted take on the Adams family. But I do like the fact that we're seeing Cindy rebuilding the Injustice Society. The best part of the episode was definitely the confrontation between Courtney and Shade and their little chat together. So I'll be intrigued to see what happens next with Shade because... He's definitely hiding something from Courtney, and so are the parents, so is Pat, and so is Barbara. And I really want to know what's bothering them about the JSA and Eclipso. So guys, let me know what you thought about this episode. Really, really enjoyed this. It's another 7.5 out of 10 for me. Not a lot of action, but a little bit of world building and some reveals, which was key to us because... Um, a lot of people are now saying, how comes Dr. Midnight didn't recognise her, didn't know what was going on? Uh, the time in the Shadowlands does pass differently and I think we're looking at a very disorientated Dr. Midnight. For him, what is years for us could be seconds for him in the Darklands. So there's a level of him sort of being confused about what's going on and only will he be told the truth when they decide to pull him out of, of there. I think the Shade has probably lost all control over the Shadowlands and if he wanted to take him out, then it's something that he could have done already. And I think that the Shade doesn't know, may not know how to probably get Dr. Midnight out of there. Um, so yeah, there's a, probably a level of that in there, but hopefully we'll see that play off down the road. Let me know your thoughts, guys, and I'll speak to you in the next one. Peace out.